Welcome back, everyone. Uh, Stephen Mead here with Domicile Real Estate. This is our Southern California housing market update uh, for June 22nd. And, uh, you know, just one thing someone actually asked me, why does it seem like our housing market updates are always dated the day before we air them? And that's because I like to actually label it with the date that the data is through, not necessarily the date that I do the presentation. And, you know, one thing I want to talk about before we start this week is to understand that using this data is really important information in combination with other sources of information. I think most people really want, you know, if they could, they'd want to get down to like just a simple thermometer that says, how hot is the market, right? Like a thermometer that just shows it. And unfortunately, that doesn't really ever tell the complete story. So in addition to the data we present here, there's also some data that's in the field that's also important. And one of the reasons why, you know, we always try to balance between representing both buyers and sellers, because that way we have a really good, uh, you know, finger on the pulse of the market from both sides, right? How does it feel for sellers right now? What are they saying? How does it feel for buyers? And what are they saying as well? And, you know, this is a market that is moving very, very quickly, meaning every single week, it feels like our market has changed to a noticeable degree. And that's part of the reason why I'm, I'm committed to using data that is not old, because I think it's really important when you're trying to make decisions from today looking forward that you're not basing it on sold data that is the result of contract negotiations that were over a month ago. So just to kind of give you guys an idea, that's, that's sort of our, our thesis and, and where we're coming from. Let me start off with some of our slides. We actually have a new slide this week too that I'm gonna introduce here in a couple minutes. Um, and let's see, going through and starting off, let's take a look at our new listings because I think you know our story is already starting here. And I'll grab out my pointer here because I, I do want to point a couple things out. So if you look, we've seen the number of new listings, especially in our $1 million category here. Uh, it was good pre-COVID, pre-state home order. It took a dive and then it's been slowly building back. But something's happening. It's not really jumping quite the same way. And now we've only had one week of sort of week over week decline. But, you know, I mean, we're, we're, in, we're in basically a prime market. I find that very surprising. And I'm curious to see whether that continues. But whatever the case is, you know, this is an interesting development because normally you would expect us to just jump all the way back up to what a normal level of new listings would be uh, for this time of year. And it doesn't look like that is actually happening right now. So that's very curious. And, you know, we actually see the same thing in our one to $2 million category new listings there dropped as well. And, you know, for me, I'm trying to get in the mindset, right, of, of sellers right now and why that might be. And I'm, I'm having trouble coming up with an idea. The only thing I can think of is that, you know, we do have a number of sellers that are sort of in a wait and see approach. I think given some of the market data I'm going to explain, I don't think that's really a great position to be in right now for a seller. I think now is not a wait and see time. Earlier this year, absolutely. Right now, not so much. And if we jump to the next slide here, we're gonna go over where are we versus 2019. And I think this really illustrates my point. We are at, uh, you know, we're down by almost 500 listings. I mean, we're still off 20 to 25% versus last year in our new listings under 1 million category. Now, just as a reminder for those of you who maybe haven't seen a lot of our videos, this is for Los Angeles and Orange Counties together for almost all of our stats. And the reason why I do that is because a lot, of our mar a lot of these markets are intertwined. So for example, if somebody is looking at houses in Huntington Beach or Seal Beach, they may also be looking at houses in Long Beach, which is LA County. So you know, these markets are contiguous with one another. So just as a reminder, this is Orange and Los Angeles counties out here in California. This is the Southern California housing market update. And now if this is sort of our supply side of the equation, and supply is going down, we can go over here and look at new escrows, right? And we had something else curious happen here. In our under 1 million category, they did drop, but ever so slightly. And if you look at our history here, we see that's happened a couple weeks before, right? Where we see these sort of one week drops that don't mean a lot. But looking here, um, 
you know, I have a couple of theories why this might be happening because anecdotally on the street, there is no shortage of buyers out there. Um, you know, I attended uh, showings on Saturday and because open houses are no longer allowed in Southern California, what a lot of agents are doing is they will set up a time 10 to 3 p.m. and they will schedule appointments every 15 minutes. There was a new listing. It was in the mid $600,000 and they had appointments every 15 minutes all day long. So I don't think this is a shortage of buyers. I think what might be happening is that we may actually be coming inventory constricted, meaning there are way more buyers out there than there are sellers. And in fact, if we had more listings, we would sell a lot more houses and we'd see with more listings, this new escrow number come up. So we might actually be supply side constricted. Now our one to two million dollar market, that is actually still recovering quite nicely. It looks like a much smoother path. Um, I have a theory in this price range that buyer demand is a little bit more affected by stock market performance. And as the stock market is recovered, we see people are kind of taking some of their winnings and they're not afraid to put them back into housing. Now, if we compare with last year, we're going to kind of have a bit of a shocking slide here. And uh, so this is, again, we are showing this week, which is 1,589 new escrows and 2019. So I'm going to summarize here just for a minute because I think this is incredibly important. So I'm going to, I'm going to go off the slides. We have a situation where our supply is less than we would expect for this time of year. And we have a situation where the number of new escrows is higher than we would expect for this time of year. I, I don't think it takes really a rocket scientist or an armchair economist like myself to sort of give you a hint into what's going on. It means we are moving into an ultra competitive market. In that sense, I mean that there is legitimately more than one buyer for every house that is on the market. We don't have any sort of direct test for that. Like we don't have anything. There's, there's no MLS statistic for that, right? However, we can infer it from some of these data points. And you know, now we're gonna take a look at our absorption rate, which is, um, I, I kind of have some interesting words about that too, because I think we need a little bit more detail on that, because I think there's a very important point to explain. And I'm gonna jump ahead here to our absorption rate. So if we come here and we break this down, uh, we have something crazy happening, right? This is this is our under one million category, and we are we are into the 90s on absorption rate. Right? I think this is technically about 93 percent. Historically, that is extremely high. Uh, that is not a normal absorption rate in any market, right? Normal is more around this 80 percent number over across here, and even in our higher end luxury market, this one to two million we also have a very high absorption rate. That market tends to take longer to sell, but even right now we're seeing very high absorption rates in that market. And there's something uh, I kind of want to talk about just for a moment. Please mind me, don't mind me geeking out just for a second, but you know, absorption rate is pretty simple. It says for every new listing that came on the market, how many listings went off the market because people wrote contracts on them, right? I mean, it's, it's a pretty simple idea. You know, you have new listings coming in and you have older listings getting sucked up by buyers going down. And you might say to yourself, well, a balanced market would be 100% absorption. For every new listing on the market, there was a buyer. And that sounds logical, but it's actually incorrect. And the reason being is that when homes get listed on the market, they don't all find buyers. Sometimes sellers will put homes on the market at a ridiculous price just because they want to see if someone will pay it. Other times you have sellers who go on the market and then their plans change and they pull those houses from the market. So what that really means is 90% of, that's about 10% of the listings never, never result in a sale, right? I mean, that number fluctuates over time, but for our purposes, that's a pretty good approximation. So what that really means is that if you have over 90% absorption and we are at 93 right now, that means that you actually are, have sort of a market where you are burning through past inventory. It's sort of like the budget equivalent of you saying, I made $4,000 and I spent 4,500. You are eating into your savings. And that is what our market is doing. It is eating into the listings, which have thus far been relatively unsellable. 
right? So, you know, that's a very interesting line that we have crossed by doing this. I'm curious to see if we will cross that line again next week. But these are sort of the, the signs of, of what I call this ultra competitive market. It doesn't just mean it's a brisk or a hot market. It means it's a market where there can be some pretty drastic price changes where prices can move quickly and a lot of interesting things can happen in a market once you sort of start hitting some of these key metrics. So for me, that's sort of what I'm seeing. Um, you know, and these are, these are again what I call leading indicators, right? A very high absorption rate tells me that prices are going to be going up, right? It, it's sort of a, a forward looking um, anticipation Right? It, it tells me about what I think is going to happen in the next couple of weeks. So when we look at these signs, you know, unless something changes, expect those things to happen in the next coming weeks. Um, I also promised you that uh, we would have some new graphs, and those are coming up, I promise. Um, what I want to go over here is something else that's unexpected. And if you look here, I'm going to get out our pointer. We kind of had a very interesting pattern with our average pending list price. And I'm gonna repeat average pending list price for a moment because it is very important to understand why we use this metric and not other metrics. So the reason why I like to use a pending list price is because we don't know in our MLS system what a price is when a house goes into escrow. So for example, if you see a sign down the street and that home is listed for $800,000. We'll use that as an example. And all of a sudden you see a in escrow sign on top of that listing. There's no price change in the MLS required. So they could be buying that house for 750. They could be buying it for 850. We don't know until that house closes. So that's the bad news of using a pending list price. The good news is it means that I have an idea of which houses are selling and this data is based on which houses are selling in the past week. So if we go through here, we see in our under $1 million market, you know, we started at a 611 price, things dropped, they kind of bounced off a bottom and then they sort of have this not perfect path of moving in an upward direction. Last week, we were at 626, 305, but then this week we actually dropped one and a half percent. And if you are like me, you are probably screaming at your computer, what happened, right? Like what happened to that? So I, of course, also have the same question. And whenever data moves in a direction that is sort of contrary to other indicators, my question I ask myself is, what am I missing? What factor is there? And I'm going to tell you what I think is happening of theory. And then I'm going to show you the test that I did to see whether I was right or not. So my theory is this. And remember, I mentioned just a couple minutes ago, and please excuse the nerd out. Uh, I promise I will be done in a minute or two. But if you'll remember, I mentioned just a minute ago that our average pending list price is what the list price was when a home went into escrow, right? So it is telling us what they were asking for the house. It does not say what they were under contract. And if you think about markets, right, if a market is dropping, what do you think happens? What, what kind of deals do you think people negotiate? Do you think they're paying over list price or under list price for houses? In a declining market, they tend to be paying under list price for houses on average. And in a rapidly rising market, what do people do? They tend to overbid and they are paying over list price for houses. So that's my running theory is that we are now entering this hyper competitive market and we are going to have a lot of bids that are going to be over list price. Now, the problem is, how do we test for this? How do we know whether this is a valid theory or not? How do we have an idea? And I thought, well, we can look back and check this, right? There's something called the list price to close price ratio, right? How close did people get to their list price on average for houses? And we can look back at that over time, but there's one little problem with that stat. And, uh, and I'll get to that in a minute. I don't wanna spoil a little bit of the surprise. So let me pull that up here. And we created a graph where we show what happened. Okay, so this is our list to close ratio. Um, and let's see, I didn't get my title right on the graph. Sorry about that. But here's what we've got going. We've got, this is these weeks, right? Beginning 5-5. Five, five. And if I get on my pointer here, we can kind of follow the path a little bit. We started around 98%, then we jumped. 
And we've kind of been fluctuating sort of in this mid 99%. That means people on average are only getting half percent off list price. And that's through 616. There's a problem with this data. And the problem with this data is the problem that is always with sold data. If a home closed on June 16th, that means that contract was negotiated in the beginning or middle of May or possibly even older. So this data is already a month old, right? Our most recent data for this is a month old. And frankly, our market has moved significantly in the last month. The dynamics of our market have changed. So while we kind of see a trend of it going up, it's not really very definitive. So I then got an idea for something and I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you kind of my theory on this and then I'm gonna show you the data. So I got an idea that, you know, sometimes houses sell and they close very quickly. So while 30 days is our standard escrow time, not all sales are that way. And there's a couple of reasons why. There are cash sales, those tend to happen within two weeks. But we also have situations where a home might not have been listed in the MLS, they took an offer and then at some point they put it into the MLS, right? Um, but primarily we're seeing these shorter deals. We also have in competitive environments, there are lenders who can close in 10 to 15 days. So this is obviously a very small subset of the data. So we have to be careful when we talk about that. So I'll, I'll, I'll give you some of the numbers. I actually found that in our Los Angeles and Orange County um, data set, of the homes that went into escrow in the last week, about 50 of them also closed in the last week. So we have a sample size of 50 and I thought, well, this data is way more recent. We know they took a contract in the last week and they closed the deal in the last week. So what, what do those deals like? like? And guess what? Here is the big clue of what might be happening. In the last week of those deals that close quickly, people are paying over list price on average. So we have swung from getting a discount from list price to paying over. My prediction is that as the sold data catches up with us, we are gonna see on this graph, and I will keep updating this so I can show you guys, we're gonna see this number will rise to meet this one. We will see that our average is in fact over 100% on our new escrows that are happening, meaning that list prices are lagging behind where the market is because the market has moved faster and has moved upward more quickly then listing agents have gotten it in their eye when they give pricing advice on houses. So, you know, some very interesting data that's happening. Again, this is another indication that we are entering sort of this ultra competitive market, which is very, very clearly in favor of sellers. Um, you know, and part of this is driven by the fact that we have very low interest rates. So the buyers don't mind so much that the prices are going up a little bit because it is not affecting their payments as much as you might think. I'm gonna talk about that in a minute uh, when we do our affordability update. So this again was for our, our under 1 million data because it's a little bit easier to run. If we look in our um, high-end market, again, starting 519, this is one to $2 million. And we look in that category, we have moved up about $20,000. This tends to fluctuate around a little bit too. We're just under 1.4 million. Uh, if we go to our days on market for new escrows, right? So this is saying the, all these new contracts that are happening, how long did it take them to find a buyer? And if we look here, this number is again dropping for in our under 1 million category. We are, uh, we are just, I think, right about 32 days on average for that. And even in our high end, it went up a little bit. But I mean, this is still anything in the mid 40s is a very, very low days on market for homes priced over a million dollars. I mean, it's just, it's just is both of these lead me to indicate we are in a very strong market in terms of what is buyer demand. And then finally I have for you, probably one of my favorite graphs because I think this speaks to a lot of people who are thinking about buying. This is our, what has happened in Orange County. Again, we had to run our data to get a, to get a small enough data set that wasn't over 5,000 houses. We had to restrict this to Orange County, but we looked at single family and condos together. And this is what we did. We looked back to June of 2018 and we looked at the prevailing interest rate and we sort of came up with a baseline. So that, that's our baseline figure. And then we look over time every month to see 
has the payment on a median priced home, has that gone, is that more or less expensive than it was two years ago? And guess what? We are again um, running at right about a 90% level. In fact, it, it went up slightly this past week, and that's partly because interest rates actually dropped slightly and our median price went up slightly if we were going by median just for Orange County. Um, you know, we're still holding in this 90% range. And the reason why this graph is really important is this graph tells me that our prices have room to grow. So we have sort of all the ingredients of a, of a fairly rapidly increasing market. I have another special slide for us next week. Um, I'm not, you're just gonna have to tune in to figure it out, but it talks about how price increases happen. If you look at this graph and you kind of put the data together, we start thinking of, well, what conclusions can we draw? So right now we have a bit of a perfect storm. And when we see these sort of jumps in price, it's usually because we have a confluence of events. It's never, it's never just one factor that makes prices drop. So we have, we have a shortage of inventory. We have a, a glut of buyers, right? And we also have a situation where affordability is 10% better by payment than it was two years ago. So you, you add in these three factors together and I think it's pretty easy to see that in the short term, right, you know, prices are going to continue to be very, very strong. I think we still have some movement to go up. I would say the likelihood of prices going down in the short term is very, very low. I think that the big thing that I look at for the future, because, you know, I like to talk about both sides of an issue, right? Like, you know, this is what's likely to happen. And this is sort of the low likelihood, but still possible if interest rates were to jump, especially unexpectedly, we tend to see two things happen immediately. Prices spike, right? Because people panic that they're going to get priced out of the market if interest rates go up. So they, they rush to buy anything, right? And overbid. And then we actually start to see that, you know, our market softens a little bit because demand drops. And that's a possibility but we are in an election year. And the one thing I've learned, it does not matter which party, no party wants a lousy economy going into an election. So the chances of interest rates going up, I'd say are extremely low before November. So just to kind of give a conclusion here, if you are a seller, I don't think we have seen such a great market to sell in. And while I think things look really good right now and they look good in the immediate future, you know, you can play that game where you want to wait and see how far, you know, the wave's going to go before it breaks, right? Um, if you are a buyer, yeah, prices, prices are probably going up, but at the same time, rates are still really good. I think now's the time, if, if you've been sitting on the sidelines, what you don't want to do is be in a situation where prices go up and so do rates, and then you actually are priced out of the market. Anyhow, as always, questions, comments, we love them. If you are interested in buying or selling, we can help you do that as well in the Southern California area. And uh, we will see you again next week for our next market update.